Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about two Foundry VTT mods that can be used to enhance uh, your tokens in the game. Uh, both your player character tokens, your NPC tokens, uh, and of course, the best part is they can add a lot of variety to NPC tokens that are dragged into a scene uh, to keep things a little fresh uh, while you're playing. So I'm in my test world right now, and the only mods that are currently active are my compendiums, quick insert to allow me to search my compendiums quickly, and the two mods we're going to talk about today. Token HUD Wildcard, which is the mod that allows you to swap out token art, and Token Mold, which does a number of things to uh, your NPC actors and kind of allows you to control and randomize elements of them as they are dragged out into a scene. So, let me close this out and let's take a look at what is going on here. So when I say that you can change out your um, player character token arts, I'll use Chamomile as an example. So I'll drag Chamomile out into the scene and there she is, she's got a lovely token. Now, when I click on her, I can now right click and there should be a little person with a circular arrow swooping around. If I click on that, it will bring up the other tokens that are available. So if I wanted to, I could swap out my art for something different. Uh, this is very similar to having a table set up, uh, an image table set up for a token in uh, Roll20. All right, cool. Now, what's interesting about uh, Chamomile is she has a default image. So every time I drag her out, she's gonna get that same image and then I have to change it. But it can be set to randomize the image every single time. Uh, I'll show you that with this orc. So if I drag out this orc, it gets random orc arts, okay? If I drag out another orc, random orc. If I drag out another one, random and that just keeps going keeps randomly picking orcs from a directory full of orc miniatures now something cool is this orc is very small and this orc is very big and each of these orcs has uh, a little adjective in front of it temperate orc uh indelible orc what do we got here ceremonial orc and emotionless orc uh, so, how is all this happening? How are they changing sizes? How are they getting these weird um, adjectives at the front? Um, this is all happening because of token mold. So, um, wildcard is creating a random token, and then token mold is adding the adjectives and changing the size. So, uh, to better explain how it works, we're going to go ahead and build one ourselves. So... Uh, what we'll do is I'm going to just create an actor and we'll make it an NPC and we'll call it commoner. There we go. And let's see. Commoner gets, uh, I'll say, 1d8 hit points. Ooh, not 11d8. Okay. And we'll just say that they have, I don't know, 5 hit points on average. Cool. Uh, so... We have our commoner. Doesn't have anything assigned to it. It's fresh out of the box. So I'm gonna go to prototype token and I'm gonna go over to the image tab of prototype token and I'm going to go to the directory where I have uploaded a bunch of commoner tokens. And to generate these commoner tokens, I just went to Art Breeder, uh, which is a website where you can have an AI computer create art for you and just churned out a whole bunch of just random basic um, men, women, children, old, young, all that jazz. Uh, they are all in this folder called commoners and as you can see we have a nice variety. It's 40 different miniatures in here. Uh, so I'm just going to select any old miniature here. Uh, this old band. There we go. And I'll hit select. So now, now uh, I need to go to the token image path. I need to scroll all the way to the end. Where it says commoners forward slash and then the name of the miniature, I need to remove the name of the miniature and put a little asterisk. Little star guy, shift, shift eight. 
Now I need to activate randomized wildcard images by checking this box. Now this randomized wildcard images is only going to show up if you have the mod installed. Now the other feature of this, if I scroll down, is default image. So if I wanted, I could have a default image set so that, like Chamomile, every time I dragged it out, it was always the same picture and then I'd have to manually switch. But if I leave this blank, it will just randomly grab from the commoners folder, token slash commoners, it will just grab a random one and populate it. So that's all we had to do to get that set up. So I'm gonna hit update token, and now commoner is good to go. So now, now when I drag that out, it will randomly grab a commoner artwork and make it into a token. So how am I getting these weird adjectives in front of the names? Well, that is from Token Mold. Now, Token Mold, uh, you can't find its settings in uh, the Configure Settings section. For whatever reason, if I go here and I try to mess with the module settings, I'm not gonna see Token Mold. I'll see Token HUD Wildcard, um, which allows me to change, I think, two things here, and both have to do with previewing which miniature you're switching to. Um, the settings for token mold actually live at the top of your actors um, directory. So if I go to the top here, uh, you can see token mold. And the settings for that are going to be this little gear off to the right, above the create folder button. And the default setting is to apply settings to unlinked tokens only. So this is very important because if you don't have this box checked, it will assign all of this randomization stuff to everything, including your player characters. So to show you in Chamomile's prototype token, she has link actor data checked. So she won't be affected by token mold. But the commoner we just made, which I guess is way down here at the bottom. There we go. If I go to their prototype, you can see that they are not linked. All right, uh, so if we go to name, uh, by default, it is going to add numbers to um, the people that you send out. So says orc number two, orc number four. Uh, you don't have to keep this on, but some people like it for keeping track of uh, things in the scene. And there's also add random adjective from dictionary. And then they have a big dictionary here of over 4,700 random adjectives. And I will tell you what, they add a lot of fun to the sessions, um, especially when the when the adjectives are ridiculous or um, absolutely perfect uh, for the current situation. Um, either way, it does allow us all to kind of keep track of what's going on um, when there's a bunch of enemies on the board that are all very similar. Um, you could take this even further. Uh, they have a naming uh, section here where you can actually replace orc with a randomized name, and then you can feed tables into that um, feature. So it would go and grab uh, names that are appropriate for your campaign setting. Uh, unfortunately, you can't quickly toggle between these. So it would be one of those things that you would turn on if you were populating like a, a busy town square or something, you would turn on like uh, regional Forgotten Realms names or something. Uh, and then you toggle it back off. I, I generally don't go in for it. Um, I, I have my random name tables in another window, and as needed, I you know write down NPC names as they are asked, but I don't populate all the names in advance. So there's also um, system specific. Uh, so this is, of course, I believe for 5e, uh, because we are operating out of a 5e um, game. So you can tell it to send random HP rolls to, um, to chat because token mold will actually roll randomly for the hit points on all your monsters. Um, or you can keep that a secret. Uh, that's the default, just keep it a secret. And the default here is that it will randomly scale uh, your tokens based on the size on their character sheet and then also make sure that they are scaled appropriately to the, the map. Uh, and then you can go a little bit uh, deeper here and kind of control what is uh, shown on every token. I make sure that it turns off vision because the more miniatures that have vision, the more calculations are made and the slower your game's going to run. Um, so I leave that checked off. Um, but you can kind of play around with these and, and figure out what you like. 
Random mirroring is cool because sometimes this orc will face left and sometimes it'll face right because it's all randomized, which is pretty cool. Um, if you play with top-down tokens, it can even randomize the direction uh, that they're rotated, uh, which is pretty cool. And then for stat overlays, I have other mods that take care of my stat overlays, but if you don't, Token Mold can provide you with that. You can go and grab values from the sheet like armor class and um, perception and things like that and have them overlay on your miniature. Alright, so now that we've explained how it works, let's go ahead and drag out some commoners and see what happens. So there is a feeble-minded commoner number one. Drag out another one, and we've got Aberrant Commoner 2, and so on and so forth. We just drag all these out. Time Commoner. Sometimes these 4,700 adjectives don't make any sense. Sometimes, oh man, Addicted Commoner. I might, as a DM, run with that. Say that that guy's got a skooma addiction or something that the players could use to their advantage if they're trying to get information. Um, this guy's incapable, probably because he's like four years old. I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you don't like something that you got, you can always delete them and drag out a new one. Or if you're feeling spicy, you could go and just try and select um, a different miniature from the huge scrolling list of miniatures that are available. Um, there is no limit to the size of the directory, so you could have hundreds of uh, just NPC arts that are randomized every time you drag them out into the scene. Um, so yeah, that is a token wildcard and uh, token mold uh, and how the two of them can work together to make populating a scene with a variety of NPCs uh, more interesting and also allows your players to indulge in multiple character tokens. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about either of these mods, uh, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. I will provide links to both of these and to Art Breeder in the description.